Okay, so tomorrow, and for any other Friday that we have school, I have math help from 7.30 to 8.05. So I'll have that every Friday in the morning. You can come at 7.30, or you can come anytime before 8.05 to get something out of it. But I would say if you're going to come for the math help, don't come at like 7.45 or 50 because you come in and by the time you settled everything, you really didn't get much time to do it. So make sure you try to come at 7.30 to make it worthwhile. Um, yes, ma'am? Yeah, let me keep going here, so I'll explain it. And then, so you'll have that available. That's every Friday that we have school. You can come at 7.30 to 8.05. Okay, that's Fridays. Only Fridays, okay, because so, I think some of you came another day, and that's okay, but only Fridays are set up for that. Hold on, hold on, Emory. Um, so what you want to do is uh, prepare on your own, and then you can come to math help. We're taking that quiz the second period in the afternoon which means the first period I'm going to give you um, a review for that quiz. Oh, I'll figure it out. That's okay, I'll figure it out. Okay. Um, go ahead and turn to lesson 4-5, which is on page 222. Thank you, 222. Take out your notes, we're gonna start off. We're gonna start this lesson, we won't be able to finish it today because we don't have that much time. But this lesson is on Percent of change, so 4-5. Percent of change. And like I was telling the other class, um, you deal with this a lot. In fact, you probably deal with it more than you think. Um, and I gave some illustrations. So one of the basic ways we use percent of change is this. When you go to the store to buy something, you pay for that item but you pay extra. Do you guys know what that extra is called? Tax. And I think in South Carolina, the tax rate is 6%. So I gave this illustration, let's say a TV, like just a, a good, nice TV, Gen general, I don't know how big, you imagine it. $1,000, that's what it says, $999, $1,000. So what you're gonna do is when you go to the register, you bring that TV or they scan it, and at the end, it's gonna say everything added together with the 6% tax would be what? $1,060. So how much extra did you have to pay for that TV? So it was $1,060 just for tax. It's almost like $60 just to pay for that item. Not to pay, not to pay for it itself, but to have the ability to pay for it, 60 more dollars. Yeah, that's why you can go to other uh, places and not have to pay that tax, which is nice, but you know, that's 1% I don't like. I don't like tax. By the way, if you're pi buying a car, what happens to that tax amount? That goes way up. You can pay from $300, $400 to like several thousands of dollars extra for that vehicle. So that's important. But you know what? There is a percent of change I do like. Discounts. Have you ever had those 20% discount, 50% discount? 80% discount, oh wow, yeah, 100%, oh my. Yeah, that's where you get arrested for trying to uh, use a 100% discount. Uh, but anyway, uh, I go, what, what I do is, that, this is a practical example for me, I go to the stores and I go, I go for clothing, go directly to clearance, clearance, what can I find there? And my biggest surprise is this, you see something and you're like, okay, it's knocked down, whatever percent, now you know what it's gonna cost, and then you go to the register, and this is one of my favorite things, guys. One of my favorite things is when I get to that register and they scan it, I look at their little pricing guide, and you know what happens? They charge me less than what I even thought it was. Have you ever had that happen? No? That's amazing. You thought you were going to pay this much, which was a good price, and then they're only charging you that much. I'm excited. I like that. Okay. If it ever happens to you, you'll feel that experience as well. So that's a good percentage uh, decrease, right? But there are also increases. Let's talk about a percent of change. We're gonna talk about percent of increase and percent of decrease. And they're really the same. They're really not too difficult. So percent of increase. Okay, there's a little uh, fraction that I need to know. It's very simple. I hope you guys get it. 
but you need to write it down. The percent of increase can be found by doing this. You're going to find the amount of change. The amount of change. That's going to always go into the numerator, the amount of change, always, 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 always. And then in the, in the denominator, you're going to get the, or you're going to put down the original amount. The original amount. Okay, always. Okay, this is the key to this lesson right here. If you know this, you're good. Okay, let's read example number one to see how this actually plays out. So can someone read for me on page 222, example one? All right, Jack, go ahead. Nice and loudly, please pay attention so you know what we're talking about. In 1992 Okay, if you were listening or looking at that problem, that's a lot of info. They gave you three separate dates, they gave you three separate numbers of condors, and we're trying to figure out this percent of increase. Okay, um, did the condo population through the years go up or did it go down? It went up. So that is a percent of, what do you think, increase or decrease? Increase. Now make sure you get that. That's like part of your answer, and I hope you understand it's a percent of increase. Now, we're going to find these amounts right now. So let me ask, what two years are they trying to compare right now? Because they gave me three years, but they want me to compare two years. Which ones are they? Jackson? So 92, I'm going to put here 92 so we have for reference. And how many condors did they have in 92? Anybody? 64. 64. All right, 64 condors. And then in 95, how many condors were in existence in California? 103. All right, so that's an increase, okay? If you can identify if it's an increase or decrease, you got half the problem there. Hmm, was it increased? Okay, yeah. Um, how can you make sure? Because why don't you use this number first and that? Well, what, you, what year came first? 92. And so it went up into 95. All right, so let's find this amount of change. Okay, the amount of change is found by doing what? What do you think? How do you find the difference in the two? Oh, my. Yes, sir. Can you find the difference in the two? Okay, so you're going to do 103. Minus 64. That goes up top. 103 minus 64. Now, what was the original amount? Was it the 64 or the 103? Use logic. What do you think? Uh, I know Jack knows. Um, Matt, what was the original amount? 64. How do you, wait, I thought the 103 would be original. Which date came first? 92, so that shouldn't be hard. I hope you can get that. All right, so I'm really going to work this problem out here. What's 103 minus uh, 64? 39. 39, and then we have 64 right here. Okay, what did this problem want me to do? What, what's the whole goal? I need to find the percent of increase. Is that a percent of increase? No, that's a fraction of increase, if you want to call it that. So that is not a percent. I am going into review mode. Do you remember uh, tomorrow you have a quiz? I want you to write this down. The quiz is over. Lessons 4-1, 4-2, and 4-4. Four. So skip three, please. Don't, don't study three. Mr. A, we never went over this. Okay, don't study it. 4-1, 4-2, 4-4. That's what you're going to study for tomorrow. Um, you were gone a couple days? Yeah, so... One day? Okay. So we'll, we'll figure out that. Okay. How can I turn this fraction into a percent? There are two main ways to do it. Does anyone remember how to turn it into a percent? Two ways, main ways to do it. Yeah, okay, Lily, G? Um, you can do mm -hmm. uh, 39 over 64 equals X over 100. 
Yeah, so you're saying 39 over 64 is equal to x over 100. What did we just set up here? What is that called? Carrick, what's this called? Lily M, what's this called? Remember what this whole thing is called? A, think of your chapter. What is it? What in the world is it? Nate? Okay, you're going to use cross box to figure it out, but what is that thing called? Yeah, go ahead, Nate, again. Okay, this is a ratio. That's a ratio. This is a proportion right here. And how do you solve it? Like you said, cross products. So we're going to work it out this way, and then we'll work it out the other way. 39 times 100 is 3,900. 64 times x is 64x. Now, to help you out, if this fraction could have been reduced, do it. Like, reduce this fraction as much as you can. Um, and if it can't, just use it as it is. So solve for x. Divide both sides by 64. Oh, no. That's not a percent. OK. So what do you think you have to do with these two numbers? Nine. Divide them out. OK, so 3,900. Go ahead and do that, since this is review from yesterday. Especially. Go ahead, find that out. What's that percent? Okay, I'm going to do something for you here on this lesson. If you were to divide all these problems out, a lot of them are going to either be repeating, they're going to end very far away, um, or it's just going to make your division really long if you don't round. So I'm going to let you round all of your answers to the nearest percent. That means round it to the nearest unit right there. So what would 60.9, and it keeps going. It goes four decimal places out there. But what is 60.9 round to? 60, I'll put it right here, 61%. Okay, that would be part of your answer. Um, you'll see in the other problems that I gave you, it's gonna, you're going to have to say 61% increase. So you're going to have to write that word increase. Because they're not going to tell you if it's an increase or decrease. You tell me. So that's 61%. You guys see how we got that? That's proportions. What's this whole chapter about? Proportions. proportions. But is that the only way to work this problem out? No. No. What would be the other way to work it out? So does anyone remember what to do with the other method? You don't set up a proportion, but you do this. Yep. You multiply, or 64 times 100 equals Oh, okay. Like, you, you could do this. You could do 64 times what equals 100, and that's hard to find. But remember, can't you just divide these two together? So you're going to do 39 divided by 64, okay? And you already know it's not going to end right here. So I'm going to divide this out. All right, 64 doesn't go into 39. It does go into 390, six times. That's 384. This looks familiar. 600. Zero, zero, Drop down that other zero, you get nine, and it keeps going. Okay, if you're going to go from the fraction to the decimal, and the decimal keeps going, only go out three decimal places, okay? Only go out three decimal places, because you're going to have to round. Well, if I get this as my decimal, do you guys remember, what do I have to do to change it to a percent? Okay, multiply by 100, which means you move that decimal twice to the right. So I'm going to move it twice to the right. One, two. So it would be 60.9%. But we round it to 60. Anybody? 61%. And we have to state if it's an increase or decrease, 61% increase. Now, how many of you prefer the proportion way on this problem? Proportion. This is to that, as this is to that. How many of you prefer the decimal way? OK? So just a few of you. Which one, oh, do you guys notice the similarity? Is there a similar thing going on here? Yeah, Jenna, what's going on here? You're basically doing the same thing, but just for a bigger amount. But you have a smaller percentage, and you're going to have 
Okay, yeah, so one doesn't have, or you kind of limited the fractions here, you have the ratios uh, in a proportion, but you're basically doing Yeah, you're multiplying this by 100 and then dividing. Here you're multiplying 100 after you divide. Yep, good job, guys. That's the, that's the key there. Yes, ma'am? Isn't that um, the decimal takes longer? Like you have more steps, and that one just takes you straight to it. Gotcha. That, good. So you should know both ways. Use whichever way you prefer, but sometimes this way is preferred over that one and vice versa. Good. All right, how many of you have questions on this? All right, let's do one more together, and I'll have you do one on your own. On page 225, at the very top, number 5. 225, number 5. State whether each percent of change is a percent increase or decrease. And then find the percent of increase or decrease. There are two parts to this. Okay, what was the original on number five? What's the original value on number five? Fifty, is it dollars? Fifty dollars. What's the new amount? Seventy dollars. Okay, ready? Here's your first step on these problems. Did you do it? Did you get an increase or a decrease? So think of it. Is it increase or decrease? So that's what you have to answer first. Go ahead. Out loud. Increase. It went up. 50 to 70 means it went up. So we're going to say it's an increase. So that's part of your answer. You've got to have that in your answer. It's an increase. So you got that. Good. All right. Now I have to find that percent of increase. So we're on page 225 at the very top, number 5. I have it recording so you can watch up to number uh, minute 17. Then you'll have everything you missed. Okay. Um, here. What is the amount of change? Well, you have to do 70 minus 50. What was the original amount, the amount that goes down there? 50. 50. And you know what? You know, they're so nice to you. They told you what the original amount was. So please don't mess that up. All right, what's 70 minus 50? 20. So you have a fraction 20 over 50, which is nice. Can I reduce that? Okay, you can. You did two fifths. How, what would two fifths be as a frac or excuse me, as a percent? As a percent. Jackson? Forty percent. How many of you agree that's forty percent two fifths? What's twenty over fifty? Forty percent. So however you see it. Is this my answer? No. No, it's forty percent increase. It goes up. So you got to say increase. If you say decrease, it's wrong because it didn't go down. It went up, and that does make a difference. All right, questions on number five. Okay, go ahead and do number six on your own. I want you to do this all on your own. You're going to state whether it's increase or decrease, and then you're going to give me that percent all together in your final answer. subtract, you should never get a negative number. What goes on the bottom? The, um, over here. Yeah, always the original on the bottom. Okay, so uh, for those maybe who are not super sure what to do, uh, what would be my fraction? One over what? Yeah, because what's 200 minus 172? 28. What's the original amount? 200. Okay, and then was this an increase or decrease? Decrease. decrease. It went down from 200 to 172. That is a decrease. So I hope you got that. That's the easiest part to get. All right, I got to change this into a uh, percent. Many ways to do it. I can divide. 
I can use a proportion. I can reduce, then use a proportion. I can reduce, then divide. Okay, but what would this be as a percent? Did anyone get it? 14. Nate? 14% 14 14 decrease. That is correct. That's it. You guys got that? Good. In order to leave my classroom for lunch, you need to do number seven correctly. Go ahead. I want work on these problems. Some of them I know you can figure out intuitively, but I need to see the work to prove it because I'm not going to give you all intuitive problems. Number seven. Let's do the next one there. <clears throat> uh, hold your answer if you have it. Time to see if you got it or not. Okay, from 72 ounces to 36 ounces, increase or decrease? Decrease. decrease. So you should have put decrease. All right, and then take a seat, sir, and stay a couple minutes. All right, what percent did you get, though? I need a percent. Um, how about this? This person I call on will let you go or stay. Uh, no pressure, no pressure. Maggie. I'm so glad you said 50% decrease. That is fair. All right, you guys are dismissed.